Hello everyone. Barbara Cartland, a prolific writer of popular romances, came into contact with royal circles when her step-granddaughter, Diana, became Princess of Wales in 1981. When Miss Cartland was interviewed for the BBC radio programme today, the interviewer asked her if she thought that class barriers had broken down in Britain. Of course they have, replied Miss Cartland, or I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. We may smile wryly at Miss Cartland's answer, but she is not a minority of one. Each of us has grown up with a mixed bag of values, preconceptions, some of which are very good, while others may not tally with the gospel, one of which is class prejudice, or these days we might call it class phobia. Class distinction serves to prop up our sense of superiority over others. Now what needs to give here is this exaggerated sense of our own importance. We often heard it said, you're as young as you feel, but seldom as important. It's the self-effacing who are exalted in the eyes of God. As Jesus said, the last shall be first and the first last. Class segregation can often be taken for granted by people. It's often safer and less complicated to only mix with our own. But Jesus had a wide circle of friends, both among the rich and the poor. Some well healed, but the majority were poor people. The Gospel tells us that God lets his sun shine and his rain fall on bad men as well as good. Jesus was neither partial towards the rich nor condescending towards the poor of his day. People say that there are two Sheffields, one reasonably well off, the other less so. There may be no walls separating them, but there are invisible barriers. However, it would be wrong to pigeonhole all people in this regard. A spiritually deprived person in the gospel sense is one who is deficient in faith and love. A rich person, gospel-wise, is not restricted as to whom they value. They have no exclusion zones regarding people. It doesn't depend on where you live or even the size of your bank account. At the same time, an oversized bank balance won't earn you any favours in this regard as far as Jesus is concerned. The rich young man in the Gospel turned down the Lord's invitation to follow him because he couldn't part with his money and he was a man of great wealth. He did part company with Jesus, a very sad man indeed. But on the other hand, Joseph of Arimathea who was a man of means, gave Jesus the tomb he'd reserved for himself. St. James says, Do not try to combine faith in Jesus our glorified Lord with the making of distinctions between classes of people. Class prejudice is anti the gospel of love. Do my eyes need to be opened in this regard? Scripture says, that man looks at appearances, but the Lord looks at the heart. Now Jesus chided the Pharisees for being lovers of money, and also social recognition was high on their agenda. Is there any standoffishness in my life which is preventing me from valuing all people as brothers and sisters in the Lord, whatever their financial standing, background or class? Jesus opened the ears of the deaf man in today's gospel. May he open wide our hearts to value everyone in the same way he did. Now thank you all for listening and God bless you all. Oh.